Well, thank you. Good morning. Thank you for being with us. It's a beautiful morning, and this is a beautiful place. So we're blessed to have you here. I'm Deacon Jim, and I'm the president and CEO of Father Joe's Villages. Housing for all, that's a critical goal for which we strive, and we much strive. Every day at Father Joe's Villages, we see the consequences of the lack of housing in our city. People suffer on the streets of San Diego without a hope for a better future. For 70 years, Father Joe's Village's mission has been to prevent and end homelessness by addressing the barriers people on the streets face to achieving housing, employment, and stability. Last year alone, we provided housing, shelter, and comprehensive services to over 12,000 neighbors in need. St. Teresa of Calcutta Villa is a testament to Father Joe's Village's efforts. As one of the largest communities of its kind, St. Teresa of Calcutta Villa provides 407 new units of affordable housing in San Diego. It provides dignified, supportive housing that is preventing and ending the homelessness of hundreds of children, families, veterans, seniors, and people who are disabled. However, year after year, the barrier that we continue to fight is the lack of affordable housing. That's why we support housing for all. In order to support the success of our neighbors, funding for both services and development of more affordable housing is critical. We empower our neighbors by offering choices and opportunities and programming that help them achieve their goals. One size does not fit all, and we need all kinds of options um, along the continuum of services to meet people's needs and end homelessness for good. I thank U.S. Senator Alex Padilla for his support of affordable housing initiatives in San Diego, including the Housing for All Act. I also thank U.S. Representative Scott Peters, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria, and the City Housing Commission for being here today at St. Teresa of Calcutta Villa and to advocate for real solutions in our community. Now I'd like to introduce Albert Suniga, a resident of this building, to share a few words. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Today, uh, I'd like to share my experience, strength, and hope with all of you. My experience was that I was homeless out there, living across the street on commercial, and, uh, you know, my downward spiral led me to incarceration. That's where my strengths came in. My strengths uh, were to get down on my knees and pray to God and ask Him to show me a way. His way showed me, and I just said, I'm giving it all to you, God. I want to change. And uh, with that, other people started coming into my life and uh, just showed me that there's a way out of my downward spiral. And uh, through finding the source of my problem, my addiction, I got help for that. And uh, with that, I was blessed with this beautiful home here. And my hope today is to end homelessness. And people like Mayor Todd Gloria, the senator, congressman, deacon, you know, I thank you for advocating for us, the people with low income or no income, come together as a community to be a village, to be part of San Diego. That's all I've ever wanted in my life, and I thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, well, that, I think that's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. huh? Good job. Good job. Thank, thank you. Robert. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. thank you, Albert. Now it's my pleasure to introduce U.S. Representative Scott Peters. Thank you, Deacon Vargas. Um, so Albert has an inspiring story of faith and recovery, and that story provides hope. It also provides motivation for those of us whose job it is to provide the resources required to generate more stories like Albert's, stories of lives rebuilt. People fall on hard times, and when they do, they need their government to work to give them a hand up so that they, they can get back on their feet. This beautiful facility was built through a public-private partnership among the state, the county, the city, and a private philanthropist. 
The role of the federal government here is to provide uh, its residents with rental assistance. And that comes in the, force of project, in the form of project-based housing vouchers funded through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. It also comes from Veterans Supportive Housing, or VASH vouchers, funded through the Department of Veterans Affairs for veterans experiencing homelessness. Every renter in each of the 270 units here at St. Teresa is supported by federal rental assistance, which is a critical lifeline, both for those who live here and for our local partners who succeed in getting housing like this built. But transitional housing developments like these won't work unless someone is paying the rent. In 2020, when the Trump administration tried to slash funding for VASH vouchers, I successfully worked with my colleagues to, to fight back to stop that. Last year, we passed a law that I authored called the Veteran House Act. It makes more veterans eligible for VASH, which provides not just rental assistance, but also supportive services. And in 2016, uh, we passed a, a bill that I wrote called the Housing Efficiency Act to cut through red tape and make it easier for nonprofits to get federal housing assistance to the people who need it. A UC Berkeley uh, poll published in the, U in the San Diego Union Tribune in April cited housing costs and homelessness as the two problems people in this country, this county, are most worried about. Housing costs affect everyone, and so does homelessness. Certainly, homelessness hurts the unsheltered the most, but it undoubtedly affects every single one of us in one way or another. And that's why those of us standing here today have made tackling this crisis a top priority. I'm so grateful to have a partner in Washington, D.C. like Alex Padilla, who's been an outstanding champion in the Senate for increasing federal housing funds. And it's great to have a senator from Southern California who spends as much time in San Diego as Alex does. Thanks for being here again. He knows that Southern doesn't stop at L.A. And I'm also so grateful for the leadership of Mayor Todd Gloria, who's laser focused on building not just more transitional housing, but also lower and middle income housing and housing of all types. So with that, it's my honor to introduce my friend and our mayor, a mayor for all of us, Mayor Todd Gloria. Thank you, Scott, uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to thank Congressman Peters for always being a tireless advocate for the people of San Diego and for housing of all types. Uh, as he mentioned, we need it. From, as Albert was saying, no income, low income, middle income, uh, a lot of San Diegans are caught in the bind of housing affordability, uh, and Scott has been a wonderful partner in trying to address that issue as a city council president, as a port commissioner, as now a congressman. Uh, we're fortunate to have Scott's leadership in, in Washington on our behalf. I also want to express my appreciation to Deacon Jim Vargas and everyone here at Father Joe's Villages. Uh, San Diegans have long known uh, that when it comes to driving change on homelessness, it has been Father Joe's Villages that has been doing this work for decades. Uh, Deacon Jim, thank you for all that you put into this effort. I think it's really important. And this effort is personified by Albert, uh, who uh, shared his story today. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate the media being here to show San Diegans that it is possible to end homelessness. Because we're so frustrated and angry by what we see on the streets of San Diego every single day, it is tempting, it's actually easy, to believe that you can't get someone from the streets into housing. Albert is proof positive as a native San Diegan, grew up in Southeast San Diego, who was living on Commercial Street, but now lives here in this beautiful facility that we can end this problem if we want to. And what we're here saying today is that we certainly want to. I want to put it simply, housing is what ends homelessness. And thanks to this project, which we dedicated but just back in February, uh, there are 407 homes in this building. 270 of them are set aside for people who are experiencing homelessness and come with the supportive services that keep people housed permanently. Uh, the folks living here uh, got through our shelter network, our, shelter, our street outreach programs. 90 of them came from city shelters, uh, and 82 of those households were from uh, city-funded programs. So meaning to say 270 units, 90 from shelters, 82 from city-funded programs, you recognize street outreach to shelter, to homelessness, or to housing, that's how we end homelessness. And this is why I'm so happy to be here and why I want to stand here uh, in support of doing more of this work. Senator Padilla is doing that work. Uh, he introduced housing, the Housing for All Act of 2022, which I believe would be a game changer for San Diego, for California, and for this nation. 
This is the kind of big action that we need from our leaders in Washington, D.C. Because make no mistake, this is not a San Diego issue. This is not a California issue. This is a national issue. There is not a mayor in this country that I speak to that does not have this crisis in their city. And that is what, why we call out for national leadership. And thank God Senator Padilla is there listening to us. His legislation would invest in proven solutions to our housing shortages, fund programs that have been proven to reduce homelessness, and strengthen innovative, locally developed programs to engage with those experiencing homelessness. Uh, Scott Peters said, all the resources this bill would, uh, would substantially uh, help us build more St. Teresa of Calcutta villas here in San Diego and across this country. And local governments, like ours here at the City of San Diego, have proven that when we have the resources, we can do big and bold things, and this project is proof of that. You can see just the size and the scale. I'm not aware of another facility that is quite this large, a community quite this large, but we did it. We need probably about 20 more of these to address our most recent point in time count uh, numbers of folks. So we need more resources. Thank, and again, Senator uh, Padilla is doing that. Uh, as I mentioned, Senator uh, St. Teresa alone provides homes for more than 500 people. These are families, these are senior citizens, these are veterans, these are people with disabilities. These are people who would otherwise be on our streets, on our sidewalks, in our canyons, and on our beaches. I think we can all agree that that's not acceptable. And I think we can all agree that we need more of this. We need more of this, and we can have more of this if the Housing for All Act is turned into law. So, uh, we can begin to turn the tide back uh, on this most challenging issue that our city faces, the lack of affordable housing and the homelessness crisis that it creates. And I will do everything that I can. The city of San Diego, as the eighth largest in this country, will do everything that we can to make sure this bill becomes law. This weekend, I'll be uh, leading a resolution at the U.S. Conference of Mayors annual meeting to get the conference's full support behind this bill so that we can firmly say that America's mayors support housing for all. And because our affordable housing shortage and homelessness crisis, as I mentioned, is not a San Diego issue or a California issue, it's a national issue, we need national solutions, I believe that my colleagues at the U.S. Conference of Mayors will vote to do precisely that. Uh, so I will just say that I'm honored uh, to have the opportunity to welcome uh, Senator Padilla back to San Diego. As Congressman Peter said, he is no stranger to our community, and we deeply appreciate that, Senator. But most of all, I appreciate you for taking action on this issue that is of most importance to San Diegans. In the middle of a pandemic and economic uncertainty, this is what people talk to me the most about. This is the one they're craving for change on the most. And thankfully, we have a congressman and a senator that is listening and, more importantly, is taking action. With that, everyone, please welcome Senator Alex Padilla. Well, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Todd Gloria. It's been great to uh, work with you, not just uh, since I've been in the Senate and you've been mayor of San Diego, but going back to our days in the legislature uh, together. And of course, Congressman Scott Peters, who uh, uh, we've known each other for more than a few years as well, going back to our mutual days in local government at the city. Uh, you here in San Diego and myself uh, in the city of Los Angeles and uh, Deacon and Albert. Not just to thank you for uh, your inspiration today and for hosting us, but I share that we've known each other, we've been working together because that's what the residents of San Diego expect and deserve of their elected officials. True partnership and doing everything we can to improve their lives. Uh, I am thrilled uh, to be here this morning uh, to uh, stand with local leaders here at St. Teresa uh, to highlight the wonderful work that's uh, happening here. And to the mayor's point about the urgency of what we're talking about, homelessness, shifting to housing. On any given night, there are 6.8 million affordable homes of a shortage in the United States of America. Think about that. Across America, we are short 6.8 million affordable homes. We can, we must do better. More than half a million people experience homelessness each year. And in recent years, the rates of homelessness in California in particular has increased larger than most states. And that, by the way, includes 11,000 veterans who experience homelessness in California on any given night. Uh, more than 8% of the homeless population in California. Now these are our veterans, women and men who enlist to serve, 
to defend our nation and our democracy, and as we honored many yesterday, prepare to make the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our nation, veterans who have served on the front lines overseas, who respond to natural disasters and protect our nation many times by delivering critical aid, they deserve better. So the urgency of addressing affordable housing has only increased over the past two years of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was a big deal before, but the COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated the problem. And instead of getting frustrated, instead of throwing our hands in the air, we know that a problem of this size, a problem of this importance calls for an all hands on deck approach. And that's why I'm proud to have introduced the Housing for All Act of 2022. As Mayor, uh, as Mayor Gloria mentioned, this, is a, this bill is a comprehensive plan with a vision to end homelessness and secure affordable housing for all across America. And it's a plan that works from the bottom up. We know that every community is different, every city is different, but we seek to invest and scale up proven successful state and local programs that meet the different needs of different communities. Now, many of the best ideas in the country have been inspired by efforts right here in the state of California. And St. Teresa of Calcutta, where we are standing here today, is a perfect example, not just of successful models, but of successful public-private partnerships to create housing solutions. And I mentioned the emphasis of veterans, not just because of yesterday being Memorial Day, but to applaud that 20% of the units here at St. Teresa are reserved for California's veterans. So I guess we, I am proposing a historic federal investment in housing so that we can scale up these creative solutions and uh, others that cities and states have developed. The bill is designed to invest in a future of affordable housing for all by increasing affordable housing supply. And how do we do that? By expanding successful federal programs like the Housing Trust Fund, the Home Program, and supportive housing for the elderly and people with disabilities. We do that by also focusing on transit-oriented development that will make it easier for working families to live near good jobs, access to public transportation, and foster sustainable growth. I know we've been investing in the public transit system here in San Diego with a historic investment through the infrastructure plan that was adopted last year. Let's couple the, the investment in transit with investment in housing along those corridors as well. And at the same time, this bill will help families pay for new housing with rental assistance and housing choice vouchers. And it will support our collective efforts to end homelessness that address both the short-term and long-term needs from safe parking programs to crisis intervention teams and so much more. So uh, as we continue our recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, it's clear that we see, we're seeking to rebuild lives and our economy in a way that's much more inclusive and much more equitable for all. And yes, it is also our job to better serve America's veterans because every veteran, every person deserves dignity, security, and a space of their own, a space to call home. I'm proud to be fighting for a future of housing for all and so thankful for all the advocates and local leaders who are leading the work here on the ground in San Diego. Thank you all again for being with us and uh, at this point, we'll open it up to uh, any questions. Albert, the celebrity. Yes, Albert, you were uh, you were on the street just across the street on the commercial. Also, yes, sir. Uh, you're out there with everybody else. What what's it going to take for them to get to where you are? And what are they saying? Well, for them, uh, it's up to them to make the first step to seek recovery and to seek the solution to their problem. Right now, many of them are a lot of them are very smart people, but they choose to be out there. I don't know, uh, other for the underlining 
maybe drugs or something like that, but they have to find a solution their own. And unless they're ready and they make the first move, no one else can help them because they're stuck on a diamond spiral like I was. I prayed to God and he granted me the, uh, what I gave him. And I, I got out of it through uh, closing my mouth and listening to suggestions and the suggestions included uh, uh, going to a, a in-house program you know, all that stuff works. And uh, you could either hope it grabs, grasp and grabs you, or it's not going to work. But the person themselves have to make that choice. Thank you. See. Si. Okay. Está bien. Any other questions? <laughs> Alex, thanks for that question. And let me, allow me just to make sure everyone sees uh, Steve Russell uh, from the San Diego Housing Federation is here with us. Probably someone that should answer that question too. But to your question, I think San Diegans universally acknowledge that homelessness is a significant issue and that housing affordability is a very, very important issue. I think we often get uh, lost in the weeds when it comes to specific projects. But what I know from my long time in public service, and I hope and believe the congressman and senator would agree, that we're seeing a shift on this. That folks recognize that they can't decry homelessness and then oppose additional housing in their community. And we can quibble uh, about the bulk and scale, the number of units, the parking ratios, but at the end of the day, there is a need for this. There's a direct line between being angry about the encampment at the end of your block and the inability to build more housing in your neighborhood. And so we have passed, uh, I think, uh, nationwide, uh, nation-leading legislation to allow more projects, uh, varying in proposals. Basically, we've asked people to come forward and give us solutions. What can actually make a project pencil? And for many of these projects, they're going to go in transit-oriented communities, as the senator was mentioning, leveraging the existing investments we've made as a community. Uh, when you look at some of the bus lines and bus rapid transit lines and the trolley line extensions, we need to make best use of that public investment. And one of the ways to do that is to build housing that people can actually afford. And maybe that's the last point I want to make. When I have these conversations and when there is community questioning and maybe a little bit of pushback, I think it is often with um, a lack of understanding of where the market is today. I've heard the criticisms of that particular project, noting that the rents there will be $2,000 a month, brand new building, $2,000 a month. When people question that, I don't think that they know that the average apartment in the city now goes for $2,400 a month. And so while that may sound like a lot, if you were lucky enough to get a home or an apartment many, many years ago, recognize anyone out in the market today would see that as a bargain. And so the question for the city is, can we invite people to come in to build housing that average everyday people can afford? We're talking about Alberts who would otherwise be on the streets, or you're talking about the freshly minted bachelor degrees walking out of UC San Diego and SDSU, young people who we've invested in their, in their uh, educations, and then we're showing them the door to another city, another state, another country, if we don't make a place for them. My call is very simple. We must build more housing at all price points, and that will necessarily be near transit in jobs. And when it is, if it's a good project, we'll support it. And I believe many of these projects coming forward are not only good, but they will help us address that urgent issue of housing affordability and homelessness. Again, what most San Diegans um, uh, raise as a concern. And that would be my plea again to the media. It is accurate to get people who are opposed to these projects, but please do your best to get someone on the record who is currently looking for an apartment and can't find one, or who are sometimes on, in, in fights with other tenants to try and get one of those units. That's where we're at today. We have a decade-long waiting list for our Section 8 housing vouchers. That's why what Senator Padilla is so critical. People signing up for a Section 8 voucher today won't hear until a decade from now. That's why we have to build more housing, because it can't all be done on public subsidy. We do need some market forcing mechanisms, and that's why if you can put together something in a neighborhood which next to jobs and next to transit, we at the City of San Diego says we, not, we won't say no, we're going to say tell us more, and we're going to work with them to make sure a project seamlessly in, uh, integrates into the community in a way that we can all feel good about. At the end of the day, it is better to have somebody in an apartment than it is to have them on the streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I think obviously I think uh, the mayor said that extremely well. I think one one thing I'd say is that the three of us up here understand that one of the biggest obstacles to the continued prosperity of the Golden State is the cost of housing. That's certainly an obstacle in San Diego. And I'm going to pitch a bill to you just because um, both the mayor and the senator have brought it up. The access uh, to transit is really something that we can look forward to. We just built a $2 billion extension of the light rail uh, up from downtown up into um, the UTC area and UCSD. I've been working on that for 20 years. The federal government never asked the local governments what they were going to do to put housing near that. And it would have been an opportunity to engage with a discussion with the local governments about what you're going to do to make this $2 billion investment work by putting housing near transit. So we've got a bill called, I'm going to pitch it to them right now, called Build More Housing Near Transit. And it makes the housing plans of the localities part of the competition for federal dollars. So the taxpayers put up a billion dollars by extending the half cent sales tax in 2004. The federal government put up a billion dollars. We should be asking, what are you going to do to put up housing so that there's more riders, less of a need for cars, less of a, a demand for, um, for uh, highway space? Um, but this is a partnership of all, all levels of government, and I think um, you couldn't have a better leader at the local level, le level than Todd Gloria. And you've certainly got two interested people in the House and the Senate here today. Mayor Gloria, how do you, how do you curb what Albert said, that a lot of people on the, the yeah. streets don't want to get help? So you're, you're not going to remove yeah. the problem that's out there? That's your uphill battle? Yeah. You can build all you want, but if they don't want to get help themselves, they're not going to come into a community. Yeah. Like this. How do you fix that? That's a huge problem. Um, never giving up. So I, I appreciate, uh, uh, and I know Albert is right, right? We have, this is a free country, people have freedom of choice, but sometimes people don't use that the right way. And what I will say is, is that we have uh, street uh, outreach in uh, every council district in the city. Uh, we have uh, various groups, including Father Joe's and others, that go out every day and make contact with these individuals. It is that repeated contact that builds trust, that builds rapport, that gets them to eventually say yes. Um, and that's what we're going to do more of. Uh, my proposed city budget, the council will be in, uh, entertaining uh, in a couple of days, uh, will look to continue and grow many of those programs that, again, seek to build that trust, that rapport, that relationship that gets people to eventually choose to get off the streets. But here's the thing that's different, because uh, a lot of San Diegans, again, are frustrated. And they don't want to hear us doing the same thing over and over again. They want to see us doing things differently. And that's why I'm strongly supportive of Governor Newsom's Care Corps proposal, as well as st pending state legislation around conservatorship reform. There are some folks who are on our streets who are so deeply mentally ill or so deep in their substance abuse that they're, it's going to be very difficult for them to say yes. A lot of our street outreach people make that offer, and when they're when it's declined, uh, that's the end of the conversation. We have to make sure that there are more tools in the toolbox to get to these very acute people, because these are the folks that I think San Diegans are most alarmed about. These are the people they see standing on street corners talking to themselves. They see them you know, acting very strangely, very erratically. Uh, and they're not able to make choices, right? Some people are capable, they have the faculties, but we have to acknowledge that many of the most ill in our community are on the streets and they don't have the freedom to make that choice. Care court uh, and conservatorship reform would address that. So repeated contact until they say yes, understanding and intervening in a different way for those more acute cases can take these folks uh, and get them off the streets. Let me just say this as a final point. There is a significant number of our homeless who are economically displaced. They are a rent increase that put them on the sidewalk. They have a job that doesn't allow them to, to cover the $2,400 a month in rent. So a lot of those folks would choose tomorrow to get off the streets if we gave them the housing or the shelter to do so. And that's a part of why you've seen me in just a year's time increase our city's shelter bed capacity by 25%. If someone says they want to get off the streets, when they raise their hand, I want a bed for them that same day. And by the end of this year, we will have increased our shelter bed capacity to about 1,900 beds in the city, uh, up from about 1,100 uh, about a year and a half ago. So we are aggressively expanding the capacity to make sure that those who can't afford to live here have a place to get off the streets, that the uh, folks who have substance abuse and, and other kinds of challenges uh, can get off the streets through shelter outreach. And then lastly, for those folks who are extreme cases, who quite frequently are in our ERs or in our jails, they're costing us a ton of money, uh, that we have a better intervention that is more compassionate and more humane than what we are currently choosing to do, which is leave those very sick people on the street. You think utilizing somebody like Albert who's been on the streets might help you talk to them?
Well, yes, and I will tell you that the city for a number of years now has been funding a program with the city, with city college, the community college up the street. It's called the Peer Program. It's a certificated program uh, that allows people to actually get a certificate in homeless outreach. Some of the best uh, uh, participants in that program are people with lived experience. They have the rapport, they have the relationship, they have the understanding to make that connection faster and frankly that's what we all want we want people off the streets now and this is why the city has made that investment through our city housing commission and i appreciate the partnership with city college this is again that collaboration federal local city uh city college you can see that that's trying to drive change in this issue where again people are happy to support programs that are proven to be successful like what happens here at father joe's but they want innovation that program is innovation care court is innovation conservatorship reform is, con is innovation Oh, yeah. You know, you piggyback first. Yeah. I also want to share. Okay. Yeah. And with Todd, uh, what Mayor Gloria said, uh, I'm out here on a daily basis, and I see the uh, homeless outreach team trying to plant a seed of hope in each tent because they stop at each tent, wake them up, do a welfare check, and I'm sure they ask them. But until someone makes that, want to make that move, it's, it's not going to happen. You could either water the seed and let it grow or just let the seed die. But they're there trying to plant that seed on a daily basis, and I could attest to that. I want to just reinforce what the mayor was just sharing because he shared a number of programs, and there's one concrete program that we instituted here at Father Joe's Villages. It's called Street Health. It's known in other cities by street medicine, same type of a program. It's the same, it was the first time of its kind back in 2019, just pre-pandemic. And basically, we know that about 30% of those individuals who are out on the street will not access health care in a traditional way in brick and mortar, right? So we decided well, we would go out to them. We would take clinicians out to them to bind wounds on the streets, to, um, to check on high blood pressure and dispense medication to help them. Anything that would help them where they are. Why? Because these are individuals, especially if they have been chronically so, so they're mired in different situations and especially behavioral health. Just this year, we've added psychiatric clinicians to the team, right? It, why? Again, because these are individuals where you want to build relationships with them to the mayor's point. And it's through those relationships and in time that we've seen people come into our health center and then into the shelter system and be able to get, to get on, a, on a track where they can prosper, just as, as Albert has as well. So this is, these are just different concrete ways that we, in partnership, are able to make a difference for those who are on the streets who won't come in, right, unless you go out to them and you convince them that there's a better way. And uh, just just as a uh, well, just as a final final point, then I think we we uh, we have a tour uh, waiting for us. But um, you know, when I think about housing each and every day, I remind myself that if if it was easy, it'd be done already. That's right. That's right. The reason that uh, the homelessness challenge has manifested to the scale that we see it today, not just here in San Diego, but throughout the state and throughout the country, is because it is complex. You know, the the Alberts that I've met over the years, the success stories. Not a single one said, I came in in the first offer to help. It takes that repeated outreach, that repeat watering of the seed uh, for people. And even then, putting roofs over heads alone is not the answer because there's a multiple, uh, there's a variety of reasons why people experience homelessness, whether it's economics, and that's got to be part of the, the, the plan and the program. For some people, it's access to health care, lack thereof access to mental health care or lack thereof. Sometimes it's addressing substance abuse disorder. Sometimes it's a matter of job training or re-education. It's the, the reasons why individuals and families experiencing homelessness are complex and therefore the solutions have to be comprehensive. That's what we've learned. And that's what St. Teresa of Calcutta embodies. It is not just roofs over heads. Uh, it is really treating the person holistically to achieve the success of Albert and so many of his peers. And that's why we're so excited about the partnership, because as I said in my earlier remarks, it's going to require all hands on deck. And we see here in San Diego, the philanthropic sector stepping up, the city under Mayor Gloria City stepping up, the state of California stepping up, and with uh, Congressman Peters and I advocating in Washington, the federal government playing its role as well. So with that, just uh, want to thank you all for coming here today. And uh, Edgar, you'll, you'll guide us on the tour.